we worked with Steve and his team to employ a, a fleet infrastructure, fast charging infrastructure at a transportation authority. And so there was quantity 10, 150 kilowatt fast chargers. And we were able to design this project to get it in within a 10 minute time of um, specification so they can schedule when those, uh, those trucks and buses are going to be fully charged. Then that next round can go out there and start going on their routes. The thing is with that, with the power demand, so 150 kilowatts times 10, that's 1.5 megawatts worth of power. So this transportation authority has to go to the utility and try to demand 1.5 megawatts of power instantaneously. That's a lot of juice that the utility automatically just has to basically uh, supply for that customer. Um, and so now we're in process of working with them to provide a whole canopy structure of solar so they, they can mitigate that demand that's going to be needed from the utility um, and also a battery storage platform as well. So if there's not enough, so if, we, if there's a limitation of the solar that we're able to provide at that facility, that battery will be charging from the excess solar. And then when that those vehicles, those heavy duty vehicles need to be need to use that um, the, the stored power inside of that battery storage solution, that battery can give that demand immediately for when um, that transportation authority needs to use that power. So. Um, Part of this presentation uh, is going to be, we, we well, thank you, first of all, thank you all for, for joining us. I know this is towards the end of the presentation, presentations, should I, I should say, and uh, it's been quite of a, a long and great day. Of, hopefully uh, everyone's learned a lot. And so I want to try to see if we can tie it all together to form one complete solution. We've talked about cybersecurity, um, microgrid controllers and microgrids and solar and EV charging stations. We're going to talk a little bit about how can we how can we do a project? How do we have a project that's available, and how can we implement it to start making making this happen, and start taking action at facilities to promote and actually have clean, uh, clean, sustainable, reusable power at our facilities? And so, sustainability can be cut up in so many different ways. Um, you know, it's either goes to you know purchasing sustainable equipment for for the businesses, or either using um, paper straws instead of plastic straws. But today, this focus is the majority of sustainability movement and the effectiveness that has on the environment, but also on our financials, is the power and the energy. So we're, this, this presentation is mainly going to focus on sustainability measures that are mainly on power and energy. So how can we produce clean, green, renewable energy, but also store that from when times that we actually need it for either EV charging mechanisms or ma other manufacturing processes that we have, instead of demanding all this power from the utility in the grid. So we're gonna talk about how can we, you know, one source help you maximize your profitability if of course there's so many different rebates, grants and incentives that are out there, but also the design work. The design work is so important. I met, uh, in a previous presentation, Robin brought up about, it's very critical to have a trustworthy partner to know exactly what that design is gonna look like and to ensure that there can be full transparency to know that this model that we're creating is this, com is this completely accurate for us to achieve these savings, but also to achieve, this, achieve the grant and the funding that is available for a project like this? So, you know, one source, and, and Martin uh, briefly mentioned, we've been around for over 50, 70 years, uh, 20, 27, 29 billion dollar company worldwide. We've been around for a while. We have a lot of experience in the energy world. And of course, we're going to discuss how can we actually, you know, become fully sustainable by transferring our power away from the utility and the grid from fossil fuels productions from clean nat natural production and clean green energy for our facilities. So what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about in this presentation um, who is one source energy, a couple of market forces that are going on that the White House implemented, um, discuss what is a microgrid. I'm not going to talk too much about that because we, we talked about that a little bit earlier in the, in the, um, in the day. And then we're going to look like we're going to do a little role play. We're, we're going to see like what an actual project, what it looks like. How does a project go from concept design to that, how to actually make it work? Um, we showed this slide already. So long, long story short, we say we're, we're all we're all over the world. We can do projects um, in any in any country or any state in the United States. We're happy to support and provide value where we where we can. Um, one source energy. Uh, we've been lucky enough to. Start to win some awards recently from what we've been able to create over these last couple of years. Um, so we've won TED Magazine Best Integrated Solution. Um, I was lucky enough to win a 30 under 35 award for the, the solutions that we've been creating. And, and mainly those solutions is we tie everything together. We tie the, the battery, the solar, the EV charging stations, the microgrids, 
the labor, the procurement, uh, the financial analysis, any type of financing that is needed for these projects to help us make sure we have a, a very you know, sustainable project, but also at the same time, lucrative project. And that's one of the great things about this time that we're in right now, and especially the advancements in technology, is that A, we're going sustainable, but also it can make us a lot of money. So it's a social awareness, um, helping the world out too, but pretty good lucrative, lucrative investments on how we can, um, how much more profitability we can gain by investing into energy. Though, as I mentioned, um, we do full design, engineering, procurement, and construction for projects like this. Um, we've done over $70 million worth of projects um, in 2020, and we haven't really got the numbers quite yet from, from the past year, but we, uh, we more than doubled from, from last year, which we're really excited about. And so we create a fully integrated uh, experience. It's a one-stop shop. So there can be so many different layers and levels. And like, who do I talk to for this and that? We consolidate all into one. It's one point of contact, one person I'll be dealing with customers for projects. Um, so past projects that we have worked on, um, I can't give specific names just because of liability purposes, but anywhere from cities, uh, city water and power utilities, uh, universities, school districts, uh, industrial manufacturing facilities, commercial properties. Uh, one, of my, one of my personal favorites, wineries, I do like uh, Paso Robo's uh, Cabernet. And so we designed a microgrid for a, a wine, so a Cabernet storage facility up in Paso Robo's to allow that wine to continue to ferment um, because there's so many different, we talked about codes that are out there where the utilities can just shut down power due to fire hazards. So if you're a pharmaceutical company or a, a, a brewery or a wine, a wine facility, you need power continuously or, or continuously, or that batch could go, um, could be obsolete and be, that batch could be ruined ultimately, unfortunately. Um, we've worked on transportation authorities and also government agencies. So combining these different solutions, what are these different solutions? So the solutions that we mainly predominantly work on and focus in is financing, providing money for available um, solutions. We talked about BlackRock as an investor early on in the day. And there are, there, are, there are different types of financial packages that are available that are specifically for energy projects. And a lot of the big, um, let's just say capital providers, hedge funds, and also banks help provide um, the government these special financing opportunities for projects. And we do have access to these. So we can get very creative with our financing mechanisms to make sure that we have a very successful, lucrative, um, stable project. So HVAC, energy efficient HVAC, we do provide um, EV charging stations anywhere from the, the, the very large scale fleet that Steve went over, or if it's more basic level twos um, that are more like a, for the four to six hour charge time frame that are a lot less expensive. We provide the whole gamut and provide the software integration as well. Um, commercial industrial battery storage, commercial industrial solar, uh, we do carports, generators, lighting, uh, engineering services. We do wind and we talk about wind farms. Uh, smart building software, as we went as we went over previously in this presentation throughout the day, uh, rebate consulting and management, and also turnkey solutions. So it's basically a full full scale one stop shop for an energy project of what we do here at One Source. So to kind of get started, you know, we have to show the customer what it's going to look like to do an energy project. All right. So now let's do a little solar design. Let's let's show the let's let's see how much solar we can put on the roof. What it's going to look like. And so we will, we'll do that all in house. So it's very critical. There's many different codes based upon the local jurisdictions. Some codes have certain kind of, as you see on the right side, um, there's, there's a there's little spacing. So there's certain walkway parameters that people have to walk safely where the solar cannot be right up to the edge of the roof. We also have to create little pathways where maintenance can, can, can walk through for any HVAC type of maintenances or any solar type of maintenances we provide all that design up front for the customer, so we have an idea of what we're going to do. So, as we mentioned before, we have, we have, we have a, a team on staff that dives deep into rebate incentive analysis and management for our customers, so they don't necessarily have to have to worry about it. Uh, we do detailed, transparent proposals, and we talked about how you know important it is to know exactly what information that you're receiving. We do our design work everything by hand, um, everything where it's so there's no questions asked and we can transparently talk about and we do write-ups as well to, to explain how we're able to offset this energy that we, we that for this project that we're proposing and of course we can select multiple different manufacturers at once so every project is different 
And sometimes one manufacturer may have a, may have a slightly better solution compared to the competition of another manufacturer. And we can make sure that we find the best one just for a specific, uh, specific project. We talked about, you know, a little bit before about the market forces. Um, so the president has and the White House has allocated resources and, and grants and, and funding to help implement and provide um, more uh, energy, clean, green energy infrastructure. So, so far, it's been over $500 billion towards upgrading the power grid, which is pretty fascinating. And that's also going to be up to 500,000 electric vehicle charging stations within this whole bill. So all the investment and the grants are all coming. And so, you know, this funding and, th and this money is not going to be available for the longest time. Um, so that's kind of why it's like, you know, what? the time is now if we're going to invest into energy projects because the rebates and incentives and the grants that is being offered can significantly bring down the full cost for these projects. So just kind of another little fun stat of how, and Gabe mentioned earlier, the rise of solar. So in the beginning of 2020, according to Bloomberg, um, $117 billion was invested to renewables by companies around the world. By the end of 2020, by BBC research, that number rose to over $700 billion. So that kind of shows the gravity of the growth of how fast we're moving into this energy world to provide more and more solar. And then battery storage. So some people might, might, might think that, hey, for battery storage, this is kind of a new thing. Is it, is it gimmicky? Is it kind of, is it niche? Is it going to stay around for a while? Part of that is, you know, it's battery storage and electric vehicles are starting to come together and starting to get more popular at the right time because the batteries are actually more efficient and they're very affordable and cost effective. So that is why that now we're able to get more, adopt to more and more electric vehicles, but also have these large scale energy storage systems. So in the next 30 years, battery storage is supposed to grow by 18,000%. So it's, it's going to be here and it's going to be here to stay for, for a long time. It's going to re really be beneficial for uh, the infrastructure that we have. And we talked about earlier about having, the, having reliable power. In the state of California, um, the CPUC uh, agreed to that, that so all the main utilities inside of California agreed that if there's any fire hazards, these utilities can shut down the power. And like we said before, that's, well, there's a lot of critically critical infrastructure with certain companies and operations that need reliable power. So as we mentioned before, the winery or pharmaceuticals, but, you know, there's, and also there's other natural disasters that are in like Texas and Louisiana, unfortunately with flooding, people are hooked up to, you know, to, to life-saving um, machines that help, you know, for, in, in the medical field. And so when there's no power, it puts a, it puts a great strain on, these, these type of industries. And so having that reliable power of solar battery system can provide that reliability and that, that demand, that comfortability as well, that power will be available um, regardless of you know, any disasters that do, that, do, that do occur. And so we talked about, uh, Wally talked about a microgrid earlier. And so to kind of just to piggyback off of that, we just, I kind of, you know, try to put it as simple as possible in our, in our, in our you know, from our perspective, the, a microgrid is the ability to have a grid in a centralized controlled location. Um, so before we always were relying on, on utilities to burn fossil fuels or to burn, you know, to, to create power and to provide us the energy that we need. With a microgrid, we don't have to rely on the utility anymore. We can have it all independently at our, either our, within our city and our jurisdiction or at specific buildings and for, for, for specific buildings and campuses for companies. So we mentioned before the grid, grid tied solution where you can have this energy ecosystem that can be composed of solar batteries or wind and then also be tied to the grid. So it's like an interoperate operational web where mainly that, that type of play is mainly financial. So we'll have a, you know, the, the cost of energy for solar is going to be this, but that's going to be a lot more cheaper than the, the wind, the wind cost of energy. So now let's use the energy coming from the sun. But for some reason that the sun is not necessarily shining, um, so the battery storage energy that is stored is maybe a little more expensive compared to the grid at, at that given time. So now let's look at the grid and use let's, let's open let's close the circuit for the grid and use that as power. And there's another opportunity where we can just totally just island ourselves away from from the grid and just have the energy eco ecosystem that we have created be our sole source for the energy that we're looking to have. Um, and that is a 
islandable microgrid. And of course, the values of a microgrid, substantial cost savings. Um, you know, it's an interoperational web of what is the cheapest way to use power. So there is going to be a point where there's going to be a payback. You maximize revenue per square foot. And also, you know, if you have a, a, a large parking lot, let's say you just have asphalt and concrete, that's not making any money. Um, so we can put carports there and start making a revenue with the solar at a carport. And of course, these type of investments up front will pay for themselves, which is awesome. Um, there's also energy resilience and reliability. Of course, it creates that comfortability factor that, you know, we don't have to worry about if we're going to go have power, if we're going to have power, what about the weather, what about the utility? Microgrid gives that resiliency and reliability that we that we want and that we want and need. And also, of course, the sustainability metrics. It's great for you know, global warming is great for our environment. And it's also, you know, for as a company, it's also good for, you know, it enhances the, 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 that brand's image. Here's an example uh, of what this would look like. So we, as, as we mentioned, we can do full scale design. And this is showing a grid tied microgrid basically. So what this graph is showing is that the dark blue uh, uh, chart is the, the existing building's demand of electricity. And the light blue, is the solar that we're designing for the customer. So of course we want to oversize it a little bit. We're going to bring that parabola up. That allows us to essentially capture more energy coverage as the sun is going down. And so for this customer, they a lot of energy usage at from four to nine o'clock and they still wanted to have our energy system offset the energy. So we size the battery, which is going to be in gold right here, to release during four to nine o'clock. So as we see in the white, that shows the energy usage after the ecosystem that we created. We create a normalized flat curve essentially for to bring down the customer's overall energy usage, which is gonna create a significant, significant savings for the customer. Um, and mainly how we do this is, is the, the main assets that we utilize are wind, battery storage technology, we've mentioned about generators and also solar. So, what makes us different? Um, we're very unique at one source is because we're fully vertically integrated with all the different manufacturer partners that we have as we as we shown today. Um, but also we can select the, we can select the material, but we do engineering. We do the construction process. We are able to integrate hardware and software to create that full solution. We do energy project. We, we custom design the projects by hand. We don't use software programs to be able to do that. Um, we have done that in the past. And we saw a lot of holes in a lot of metrics that those software programs are, are, not, are not hitting and not reaching. We wanted to make sure we were as accurate as possible where we developed our, our by hand design. Um, and of course, we'll do the full rebate and grants uh, for our customers and the incentives. So we'll make sure that we manage that whole entire process so the customers will, will get that check in the mail. So there's different rebates and incentives between just different municipalities, um, different you know, state or energy commissions that will offer different unique packages, or even on a state level or a federal level. We'll make sure we research what, what opportunities are there for you, and then we'll also be able to incorporate that into our design. Um, so to have, to have a little fun, like what would a project look like? So what are the step-by-steps? Like how do we, we have all these ideas, we have all these products, like how, how, how do we make it happen? Um, so first step, we need to gather the energy data. So we need to look at the energy bills and organize those bills correctly. So we know we know exactly what to target. Like what is the most energy consumption during the day? What is the most expensive that you're dealing with? And we can target those specific areas. And then we got to create that design and that concept. So what is our strategy? Do we want a microgrid? Do we want just cost savings, the fastest ROI as possible? Do we want to use as much sustainable clean green energy as possible? So once we figure that out, we have our strategy working with the customer. Now it's time to design it. And as we've shown before, and I'll see, you'll see in a couple of extra slides after this, what that design will look like. Okay, we have our design. Does this design look good? Okay, great. The design looks good. Now, it's, now we got to engineer it. So now we got to see structurally if that building can handle that, that the amount of weight and the amount of um, material that's going to be going on top of that building or in different areas of the building. And also electrically doesn't make sense. So now, okay, uh, the structure looks good. The electrical looks good. Okay, sounds great. Now it's time to procure the equipment. Now we got to make sure we have lead times match up exactly. So when we're, when we're constructing the projects, there's not going to be any lead times or delays in construction. And of course, after the project is constructed, then we're going to be there the entire time for post-project support. Um, just because the project's over, we're still going to be here for next year and the following years. And of course, nothing, nothing's ever going to go wrong as, and as, as things never go wrong in projects. 
Um, but then afterwards, too, we're going to gather the funding. We're going to make sure once the product is complete, we're going to gather that funding and make sure the customer gets checks in the mail based upon re what rebates or incentives are available for the project. So this is what it looks like. So we'll break down exactly uh, that energy consumption inside that facility. When is the when is the energy being used at specific times? And sometimes customers use different util or use multiple energy providers. One may use a utility. Another customer may buy energy from an, from an energy company. And we have to model that and make sure our, our design is very, very accurate. As I mentioned before, we'll, ha we'll handle all the rebate, grant, and funding process depending on the jurisdiction where the project is. We'll provide detailed pro uh, proposals and show the exact metrics of what it actually is going to look like from a financial perspective for a, for a company to be able to go sustainable. So in this example, this one project was $3.2 million with, uh, with engineering, construction, and material. And based upon all the rebates and incentives that are available right now currently, it went down to $1.8 million. So right now you can over get almost get half the cost of energy and rebates or half the cost of the investment and in rebates and incentives for energy projects. And we'll try to map it out as transparently as possible. And also what kind of metrics the customer wants to see. We can do net present values. We can do internal rate of return, revenue per square foot, and of course, ROI calculations and what kind of how much energy we're going to be reducing for a project like this. So here's an example for, for a customer we had in, um, in Los Angeles. They wanted to see, you know, they want for some reason they wanted to use like the most efficient solar panel as possible. So we gave them two options: one would be the most efficient as possible, but also the highest power uh, solar module that's available in the market as well. So the customer can decide and choose for themselves which one they want to go with. So we gave them two options, and this is what it would look like from a rooftop perspective. And then we also do full-scale carport design. So what is unique again, you know, unique with us is we have core manufacturer uh, partnerships. So we know exactly um, how to design the carports to scale of what the product can actually to the, to the manufacturer's product can handle. So it's very upfront and very accurate as we're providing these designs for carports as well. Um, battery storage and battery storage, of course, is very, very crucial for for helping with our energy play. Um, and so we can do as many. There's, there's no limit of scale of what, what are the, uh, the the options, essentially. So. The largest one container we can fit is a 40 foot container, um, and that's going to be around two to three megawatts. And so if there's any projects that are larger than that, we'll just supply multiple containers and we can string them all together for a large scale type of project. So a lot of the, the functionality for battery storage is um, frequency regulation for, you know, let's just, let's just say for, um, for, 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 lar for large scale like ISOs and for large scale energy grids, there has to be a lot of frequency regulation for that. Um, demand response. So of course, if we're at a lack of energy, we need to we need to have some kind of relief and for the energy um, that is being uh, that is being demanded. Uh, voltage support, energy arbitrage. Essentially, we can store power when it's cheap and then use that power when it's really expensive. So that's how we get that nice little ROI right there as well. Um, of course, for uh, PV smoothing for a large scale, because sometimes you know the weather is very variable. And so we need to make sure we have a normalized demand um, for, you know, if, if, if solar is providing energy for that application, battery storage can make sure that we have a reliable demand for, uh, dur during that time frame. This is what it looks like as well. So a top graph of, it shows, this is uh, load shedding. So a customer's load for the, you know, the top blue up there is their existing uh, demand. So let's just say an industrial manufacturer is, is using, using a lot of power, turn their machines on around 10 o'clock in the morning. So we're trying to use a battery to bring that demand down so they don't get hit with those heavy, heavy demand charges. And so the battery brings that demand, you know, right where that green level is. This, this is very this is very conservative. We usually go a little more aggressive uh, to get more of a faster uh, payback for customers. As we show below, this is the same example that we talked about before, where this is more of the time of time of use rate. Um, so from four to nine o'clock, this customer got, got paid with, uh, gets, um, penalized for heavy demand charges during that four to nine o'clock. That's when we that's when we designed the battery to be released during that time frame. So you don't have to realize those charges. Here's an example of like what it actually looks like from a single line for a battery storage. And it's pretty neat on the, on the technology standpoint. So you put a smart meter at the panel. And so that smart meter is going to see like, okay, I don't want to go, if it hits 200, 200, mega, 200 kilowatts, that's when we want to use the battery. So Let's just say the meter reaches 
the reader, uh, the meter reads 200 kilowatts. That meter is going to talk to the battery, the energy management system in the battery, and tell that battery to release its power. And then the uh, the power is going to go through the inverter and the PCS through the panel and then into the facility. Now that facility is using the the, the power that was being stored from the battery system. And we and this is a slide as well from from my lead. Um, there's, there's it's very critical to know like how fast acting. The, the energy transformation can be from going from the utility, but also from the infrastructure that we've created. Um, so like in a pharmaceutical batch, if like it's over like 10 seconds, and if, if there's no, if it's a 10 second delay from the utility power compared to the energy infrastructure power, that can ruin whole batches. So there has to be instantaneous, very fast acting tra uh, transfer from the utility grid to the, the energy ecosystem that we're creating uh, for like this microgrid situation uh, solution. And so, also, we do as well as, and Steve mentioned earlier, um, there it is very critical to have a charging station that is going to meet the exact needs of the customer's vehicle. Because the main thing is, is that the battery size and the battery capacity can be very variable depending on if it's a truck or a um, or a or a bus or a smaller car. And so, it's very crucial to know how to design a charging station for what the customer needs. And so, right now, we're we're able to get down to like a 10 a, a 10 minute estimation that we can say hey this this, this fleet is going to be fully charged in three hours and 56 minutes then they're ready to go on their route and when the next fleet comes back in they re be ready to charge it's going to take three hours and 56 minutes before they're going to be fully charged and ready to go out um, for their routes as well we mentioned financing we do offer financing packages so we have one called building as a power plant where a building owner can be essentially be its own utility. Um, so they would charge essentially their tenants power. So we'd size a we'd size an energy system with solar and batteries, and then that would be the energy uh, the energy being provided to the tenants and the and the building owners. Usually, the delta of savings between utility power and um, the power they they will charge is around thirty to fifty percent. So they can pocket that savings or offer a discount to their customer. Or we can do straight financing where the yearly payments is going to be less than the amount of energy saved, which, of course, would be a cash flow positive investment. And, of course, the customer would get um, all the rebates and incentive money uh, for the project, as well as money in their pockets. Um, so that was a lot of information right there. And that concludes the, uh, the presentation. And I don't know if there's any, any questions. Well, there's one uh, Patrick would like to know if you have partners either within one source or more likely within Sonopar who can do what you do up in Canada. Yeah, absolutely. We can do business in Canada. Um, the great thing with Sonopar is we're, we're all over the world. Um, so there's not really specific uh, jurisdictions where we cannot do business right. in. Um, so somewhere in Canada, absolutely, we'd be able to assist and help with.